Uh, go ahead and mute your microphone. Ever since the creation of the electronic image sensor, the number of uses for cameras has just been multiplying. We now have them in our phones, they're on our cars, and even in grocery store checkout lines. One of the things I think Trevor Paglin really brought to light is that there's a vast quantity of digital pictures that nobody's ever going to see. Since images can now be represented as data, a computer could easily make or read a picture without any need for a human. We aren't just sharing our photos with each other, we're sharing them with machines too. I think as an art student and a computer programmer, I'm constantly discovering the extent that computer science has become intertwined with the medium of photography. I like to look for ways that I can try to illustrate this overlap. Here's, here's a piano in the middle of the intersection, right? And then car is at the stop sign. What's up, Matt? And I said, yep. <laughs> she comes back here. Who's playing Matt? <laughs> That's a busy intersection. Is it? In Washington? Yeah. Yeah, this might not work. We got two behind us, too. Uh, I don't know. Do you think it's doable? I will probably stand over there where I just was. And I'll be shooting this way. And you can maybe be. We should be okay. This way? Let's yeah, turn. perfect, perfect. And then... Okay, okay get out of the frame. Get out of the frame, bro. Three, two, one. You would have to be on that side of the street. I just, I just do a little shit. With this project, I really wanted to look at how modern AI perceives our world. Using my own photographs as inputs to one of today's popular object detection networks, I was able to visualize the system's output on top of the original image. I find that the results have a satirical quality about them, but also a very analytical one too. But for example, I find it really amusing that this electrical transformer was classified as a mailbox after I pretended to insert an envelope. The thing about AI is it only does what we tell it to do. Similar to training an animal, somebody has to go in there and define what sort of behavior is correct. I guess I wanted to see what underlying biases can emerge when you present a model with something very far away from the purpose it was originally designed for. And I want to look more closely at those things that machines might never really be able to understand.
when you get down to it, every picture from a digital camera is a conversion of photons into bits. The physical space gets translated to a numerical one. Even this video right now is essentially a bunch of zeros and ones. I was interested to see what sort of images I could make out of numbers instead of using just light. There's a surplus of bytes stored on our computers. It's just a matter of telling the computer that these bytes should become an image. This block of what looks like TV static is actually the full English and Latin translations of the Bible. I can take this data and embed it into the RGB channels of other images in a way that still preserves the color relationships in the original picture. I feel like this is sort of my response to the phrase that a picture can be worth a thousand words. Here they actually do consist of a million words or a thousand music notes. When it came to the Photoshop application itself, I thought it would be fun to try to modify the code using the same interface that the code usually produces. Sadly, I can confirm that it no longer functioned after my edits. This idea of having information tied within a photograph reminded me of the way a malicious program can conceal itself on a computer. This led to a set of what I call infected images. They're traditional default desktop wallpapers from Windows 10, but they've all been infected with dangerous computer viruses. I think it's really fascinating that on paper, these images are harmless, but when you interpret them as bytes, this one can actually encrypt everything on your hard drive, and this one will steal the login information from your bank account. To me, one of the most intriguing things to think about with data in general is this possibility of encoding human experiences. I think that's why so many people write songs and produce films. We try to archive certain emotions or events into a more secure format, and photography is just one practice that enables us to do that. I like to imagine that somehow it could become possible to quantize the entire world into just a string of digits. I wonder what all those numbers would add up to or what kind of image they might create.